I feel very lucky to do what I do. You know, last year, I think in the space of six months, we were able to see snow leopard, tiger, lion, cheetah, leopard, polar bears, gorillas, and super tuskers. I mean, I want people to feel like they were there when they're looking at it. I think if you get close enough, you can almost give that impression of what it was like to be there. And I, I get it quite often when we host exhibitions and someone goes, oh, how far away were you from this elephant when you took this? And you're kind of standing five feet from the picture and you go, oh, about me to you. My name is Will Fortescue, I'm a wildlife photographer. I've been doing it for about 10 years now. It started off in, in sport. It's now kind of slowly migrated through to wildlife. The change kind of happened in my early 20s. A lot of what I do now takes place across Africa, little bits of Asia, and we, we go up to the Arctic as well. A lot of my creative process is driven by a desire to photograph animals as if they were people. So this is what I've been focusing on for the last few years. And so I really try and stay away from using these mega long telephoto lenses. And I really try and use portrait style lenses. So I typically in my camera bag will have a 35 mil, a 50 mil, an 85 mil, which is not typically what you might take out to go and see these animals. But by doing that, it just really allows me to, to capture the subject in its big natural environment. And, it, and for me, that makes the photo so much more engaging. There's two sides to working in, in that kind of proximity to the subject. The first is obviously you've got to have a great deal of respect and knowledge about what you're photographing. I would say the knowledge side, I'm, I'm very reliant on the people that I work with, so I work with some phenomenal guides. I try and do everything from inside a car. It makes life a lot easier for me and for the subject. Elephant photography has definitely been my bread and butter for the last few years. I think anyone that's been following my work will realise that it's been a lot of black and white elephant photography. So I've been going to Amboseli now for four or five years. The elephant population there is staggering, it's absolutely amazing. But within that elephant population you have a little group of super tusky elephants. Now these are elephants whose tusks both weigh over 45 kilos. So these things are huge, you know, they properly will touch the ground. And when you see one of those, you really know you're seeing something quite special. I love all elephants, but these guys are something else. I think the wildlife came before the photography. Uh, we went on a family safari when I was about 13, 14, and that definitely really took hold of me. And I borrowed my dad's camera a bit, and I, I got a real kick out of photographing what we were seeing. My mum, she put me on a photography course. It was led by a guy called Michael Blythe. It was so good. I'm on the verge of calling it life-changing because it really got me hooked on photography. But his whole thing was don't worry about the technical aspects, don't worry about the camera itself. All you've got to think about is how you compose a picture, how you see the world around you. Once I left school, I left school at I just, I was almost 18 and went and got a job out in Kenya working for a safari company as an intern and I've never looked back since. I think a lot of what I do is you get many kind of moving moments and, and moments that you kind of think, oh, I'm going to bottle that one up and, and, and remember that for a while. But one that I'd really, really craved for a long time was gorillas. And so I went to Rwanda back in 2019 and I went trekking there. The difference with gorillas is you literally walk in to see them and then you sit amongst them and you only get an hour. It's quite a, it's very calm, but you're really on your toes for the entire hour. And the first time I saw them, it was absolutely incredible. I've been lucky enough to do it several times since, to the point that I've now been, I've been punched by a gorilla. I've had a gorilla drag me down a hill. I was just sitting in the wrong place at the wrong time and they were walking past me. I had my eye to the camera looking somewhere else and this gorilla was just going, just so you know, I'm here. It wasn't anything more than that, but it was right in the kidneys and when a gorilla punches you, you know about it. You do feel that kind of sense of, kind of a shared connection. It's the eye contact as well. You're not meant to make loads of eye contact, especially the dominant males. But every now and then your eyes will lock and you just feel they're looking at you in a completely different way to any other animal looks at you. The emotional side for me actually comes in more when, when I'm printing as opposed to when I'm actually in the moment. But if I, if I had to nail down specific moments, I think the first time I saw a polar bear in the Arctic, so going back a couple of years ago now, that's the one time I've actually genuinely been moved to tears, just because I, it was top of my bucket list. And actually it wasn't one bear, it was three. It was a male, it was a female, and it was a cub. But the mother and the cub 
came all the way across the ice. They came right to the edge and they walked all the way along the ice edge and we were able to follow for maybe an hour just as they walked along the ice edge and we sailed along near them. I'd been taking pictures for so long that I hadn't actually realised how cold my hands had got. So when I stopped taking pictures, my hand was almost frozen into a claw. So yeah, that, that's a different experience altogether. When I look back at all of my favourite photographers, they've all shot for magazines, they've shot for books, they've shot for prints. Seeing it on a screen is, is cool, but actually seeing it in print, that's when I get a real buzz. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't even say I'm reliving the moment, I would say I'm almost getting it for the first time. I think this is my favourite photo. I love this one. His eyes just follow you wherever you go. I think as he's staring straight down the camera barrel, they just, they follow you everywhere. Yeah, and you can see he's still got like the scars on his nose. I don't usually love my work, but there's just something a bit different about this. The, the angle, the light, kind of the way he looks so calm despite how close I was to him. But as soon as you start seeing these scratches on the nose, the scars, things like that, all these dreadlocks in here, you know that you're looking at a pretty grisly wild lion. Yeah, rhino are a funny one to photograph. They are very photogenic, but white rhino in particular are, are grazers. Their day-to-day -day activity is not that dissimilar to a cow, which is probably not what you should say about one of the world's most endangered species. But I went to go and photograph the northern white rhinos in Kenya, and there's literally there's two left, both females. It was this kind of genuinely bizarre experience to see an entire species population in front of your eyes of two. It's A, humbling, and B, pretty sad. I wasn't sure what to expect. These guys are under guard 24-7. And I was sort of photographing the relationship between their keeper and the, and the rhinos. And it, I still don't really know how I feel about it, if I'm honest with you. It's quite hard to sort of judge, I guess, success in what I do. The big way I kind of strive to utilise my work is through my partnerships with charities. For the last few years, I've done lots of work with the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation in particular. I've done a bit of work with the Zoological Society of London. We've raised just shy of 150 grand in that time, all for a variety of, of organisations. I get loads out of that, and I, I really enjoy the concept that what you're creating can kind of give back to what you're photographing. There is a lot of doom and gloom in, in conservation talk right now, and there's a lot of trying to inspire change through guilt. Photography so has that power to be a tool for good and kind of document the amazing side of the planet. It's also got the power to show the pretty horrendous side and there's amazing photographers doing that as well. So what I'd quite like my work to be is, is a more enthusiastic approach to go, look, we still have phenomenal wildlife. Okay, it's not what it was 100 years ago, 200 years ago, but we have something here that is really special and let's keep protecting it and let's not always hear about the doom and the gloom. Yeah, we're going to have to at points, but let's try and encourage that change through positivity and not through people going, we've done it. It's not down to we've done it, it's up to we can change it.